This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is October 23rd, 2023. Jonathan Osborne here. As always, joined by my co-host, Luke, Sylvia, Luke, two days, and then Magic Basketball is like officially, officially, official, like officially back. Official. Yeah. Officially. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's official. Uh, official. So I, listen, man, I feel great. I'm in a great mood, to be honest with you. The preseason's over. We we got the Flamingo game out of the way, which we will talk about. But right now, it's like 72, 73 degrees in at least central Florida. I walked out of the the room after dinner. And Lauren had a fire going, so I was like, "Whoa, all right, I I appreciate this." Like, there's a there's a fire going right now. I'm babysitting it because personally, I don't really trust it. That's just like a log burning in my house. I I don't know, but man, I chimney it's in contributing Florida, very rare. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh it's contributing to my to my good mood tonight for sure. And uh, man, I cannot believe we are we are just so close. I don't know how I'm gonna sleep the next couple nights. To be honest with you. We don't have a fireplace. We have this like entertainment center that we bought that has like a fireplace display mm-hmm. built into it. And then it has like a space heater on top of it. So you can get mm-hmm. the visuals of the fireplace and then it just it's a heating element and there's like a fan behind it so it blows hot air. So it kind of feels like you're in front of a fire, but yeah, fireplace in Florida definitely very rare. The temperature has been cooler recently. And yeah, it's great vibes, great weather. Got football on on Sundays. We're going to have magic basketball on most weeknights. We're getting back to the the nitty gritty here. But Luke, why don't you uh, talk about some chicken? You know, I would love to talk about some chicken, Jonathan. And the chicken we're talking about is the only chicken we talk about on the show. Jam Hot Chicken. You guys have heard us talk about it. We partner with Jam Hot Chicken. They're proudly serving the city beautiful. Jam Hot Chicken's bringing jams, culture, and hot chicken to the heart of Winter Park. Number four on Yelp's Florida restaurants of 2023. Go check it out. 400 West New England Avenue, Suite 13 in Hannibal Square. All chicken is hormone and antibiotic free, made fresh and fried in 100% peanut oil. Go check out Jam Hot Chicken at, at Jam Hot Chicken on all their social media platforms. Now, the next segment is also brought to our friends over at Jam Hot Chicken. I want to set the stage for you. So Magic versus Flamengo this past Friday. They're up 47-31 to with a little bit less than five minutes left in the second quarter. The ball gets swung to Goga Batadze in the corner, who then swings it to Trevelyn Queen, who's at the left wing, catches it, hits a little spin move, takes a couple of dribbles into the paint, just raises up with the right hand, and finishes all over the top of I, I don't know the gentleman's name from Flamengo, unfortunately, but not as good as the Paolo dunks over Jonas Valanciunas, but pretty close to one of the best preseason dunks that we've had. Just Travell and Queen, who we're going to talk about in, in just a couple of minutes here. I, I don't want to segue right into that because we've got some other stuff to talk about, but Travell and Queen now two-way uh, bound. Contract converted to a, a two-way he'll be playing uh, for the Orlando Magic and the Osceola Magic this upcoming season. So a big shout out to Travell and Queen, uh, this week's Jam Hot Chicken Jam of the Week. A couple of other housekeeping items uh, before we uh, start talking, really just all things Orlando Magic preseason. Uh, talk about a, a couple of other things that the Magic are, we're hoping that they're going to take care of uh, in the next couple of days here. And then we'll talk about our final predictions, finally heading into the regular season here. If you're a regular listener and sometimes you'll fast forward through like the housekeeping stuff and part of the intro, you'll want to pay attention uh, because we're going to talk about some things that are going to be pretty important uh, just content wise now that we're heading into the regular season. I know there are probably people who might not have listened to the show like since April pretty much. Uh, So welcome back. Welcome back to the regular season. Uh, Happy to, to see you. We're glad that you're hearing from us. Uh, but first of all, uh, we want to give a little uh, a little thank you to to you all. Um, Twitter now that uh, Elon Musk has uh, I guess renamed it X, and now that old Elon is in charge, Twitter acts really weird sometimes. 
especially when it comes to like follower count on X. So in the last three days, we fluctuated between 10K and like 9,500 followers on Twitter. But we feel pretty confident, you know, now that we've hit that 10K mark a few times, we just want to talk about that for a moment and really just say thank you to you all, especially if you follow us on Twitter or X or whatever it is that you like to call the bird app these days. But um, yeah, just starting the show five years ago, literally never thought that we would ever come close to 10,000 followers. Like that was not a thought of mine. That was not a goal that I had. But just looking on like how far everything has come over the last five years and all the things that we have been so privileged to be able to do, just wanted to take a moment to like, you know, like celebrate for us because it, it is a big accomplishment. Anybody that tells you it's not, I mean, good for them. To us, it is. But for the most part, really just want to let you all know how incredibly grateful that we are because like almost on a daily basis, like we are, are doing something lately that is like something I never would have imagined we would be able to do. So just like from the bottom of my heart, from like our entire team, just a huge, massive thank you. Because as hard as we work on this, none of it means anything if you all don't follow along, listen, come to events, all that kind of stuff. So seriously, thank you guys. Luke, I didn't know if you uh, wanted to throw a little something, something in there. I mean, I'll I'll kiss every one of you, you know, all okay. 10,000. So that's, that's thank a, you guys. That's a lot of kissing. <laughs> Listen, you know, some, uh, you're, you have a high probability of contracting mono kissing like 10,000 people. I would, for 10,000 followers, you know, we, you people take, that love our content, mono. support us daily. Can't, can't say thank you guys enough. All right. Fantastic. And we want to do a little push here for some reviews. So if you listen to us, especially on Apple podcasts or on Spotify, we're heading into a big season. We're trying to push out as much content as we possibly can. The more ratings, reviews that we have, it helps the algorithm. It helps push our content out to people who may not otherwise see that. So if you could pretty please just take a couple of seconds here, pause the podcast episode, go into your podcast app, whether again, that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, if you have the ability to leave a rating and review, be honest, not telling you you have to give us five stars. If you think we're five stars, that's awesome. Go ahead and give that to us. But if you could just take a couple of minutes, give us a quick rating and review. That is going to help us so much. We're trying to push out so much more content this season. And you all, you know, that's that's sort of your part. If you want to help us, uh, you know, reach more people and, and have a, a bigger platform here, that's just one little thing that, that you can do to help us. And if you haven't heard or seen already, we're launching a, a new content stream, I guess. I, I, I don't know really what to call it, a new show, uh, a new little thing that we're doing here called The Six Fan Show, where our boy Ben is going out to select games this year uh, outside Amway and getting Magic fan reactions after the game. He did one last week uh, after the the Pelicans game, after the one loss that the Magic had in the preseason, and there were some absolute electric characters in that video. If you haven't checked that out already, you can head over to our YouTube. Just type in The Sixth Fan Show. That will come up. But you know, Ben, we had to have Ben out at the home opener. So coming up on Wednesday... After the game, you'll be able to see Ben outside of Amway. He'll have his mic, his camera, his little light out there. You will not be able to miss him. So if you want to be uh, featured on the Six Fan Show, you'll be able to find Ben after the Rockets game. That will be your chance uh, to, to be on the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, we've made it through all of the housekeeping and all of the, the formalities here, Luke. Let's get into talk some Magic Basketball. So Travell and Queen, we talked about a couple of minutes ago. This week's Jam Hot Chicken Jam of the Week jammer uh, converted to a two-way contract after the the big game that he had against Flamengo looked you know pretty solid throughout the preseason, uh, but big performance you know the the, the last pre, uh, preseason game I think it was twenty four points that he finished with like nine of twelve from the floor just really lit it up uh, when the Magic traded for his G League rights the writing was kind of on the wall like this guy is a former G League MVP and G League Finals MVP. He has a pretty good chance to be the Magic's final two-way guy, and he has been converted to the two-way. The Magic went ahead, and they waived Mac McClung, Daquan Plowden, and Brandon Williams. All of those guys, in my opinion, showed different things in the preseason, uh, especially Mac McClung and Brandon Williams. Those guys showed some flashes. Luke, I'm hoping that at least a couple of those guys, like Brandon and Mac McClung especially, will end up in Osceola with the, the G League team now in, in uh, you know Kissimmee over there. Well, yeah, this is part of it. These guys come in on Exhibit 10 deals. They get preseason opportunities. 
but the the roster has get trimmed down to to 18 you know 15 regular uh contracts and then the three two-way contracts so those guys have been waived i i would say that these guys all have a significant ch- chance that they there's a significant chance they will all be in osceola um i, I think that the you know you bring them into training camp and then you pretty much the deal is I feel like with a lot of these guys, you bring in for training camp, exhibit tens, whatever, they know the next step is to play for Osceola if they don't make the actual roster. There's no reason. The only reason would be if they if one of them, like Mac, um, gets a two way somewhere, obviously he takes it. You know what's crazy about Trevlin Queen? I was like, Oh, well, maybe like he got the nod over Mac because of age, maybe he's younger, whatever. I hadn't even looked at it. I knew Mac was 23, 24 years old, but Trevlin Queen is 26. He'll be 27 in February, and uh, I did not know that. So I don't know. Maybe just some veteran leadership there, obviously, going between Orlando and, and Osceola probably will play a pretty big part, being that he was the MVP for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. So really good job by him. I think he solidified that in that Flamingo game. No about no doubt about it. He just he looked way too good to to not get that final spot. Yeah, I think so too. Um, like he just showed flashes of like like real scoring. That was I think mm-hmm. one of the the bigger surprises from uh, Travell and Queen and, and Brandon Williams as well. Some people I saw some people talking that like Brandon Williams kind of gave them Dwayne Bacon vibes. Like <laughs> it's like Brandon Williams gets the ball, you're you're probably not getting it back. Like he's getting a shot up, but I feel like those. I tweeted this during, I think it was the Pelicans game that like the exhibit 10 guys that we had this year got me more excited than like a lot of the exhibit 10 guys, you know, in, in previous years, Mm -hmm. especially Brandon Williams, Mac McClung, Travell and Queen. So I'm hoping that the other two guys are going to end up in Osceola because you put Travell and Queen, Mac McClung, Brandon Williams on that Osceola team. They're going to be really exciting this year and have a chance to to do some some cool things. And now it's cool because they're so much closer. It's it's going to be a lot easier for a lot of Orlando Magic fans to go to the Osceola games. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Really happy for those guys. We're going to see Travell and Queen. You know, probably get some burn at some point. Hopefully, it's in Magic blowout wins. But he'll get an opportunity. You know, at some point. Throughout the course of the last couple of years, since these two ways have been introduced, for better or worse, we see those guys, you know, end up getting minutes for the the Magic at some point. So probably won't be a ton of minutes, but it's all about at this point just sort of staying ready and, and taking advantage of that opportunity. And you know, Travell and Queen, you know, just like you said, almost twenty seven years old, taking advantage of the opportunity that he was given, you know, th- this year getting traded to the Osceola Magic and performing well in, in training camp and in preseason for the Magic. So really, really happy for him. And again, I really hope those other guys are able to stick around. And now that we've had you know the two-way conversion and we've had some other guys waived, I uh, just want to go through and, and read you uh, really the, the final roster for the Magic heading into the regular season here. Cole Anthony, Paolo Bancaro, Gogo Batadze, Anthony Black, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz, Gary Harris, Kevon Harris, Caleb Houston, Jet Howard, Joe Ingles, Jonathan Isaac, Chuma Okeke, Trevelyn Queen, Admiral Schofield, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner, Mo Wagner. That is your 2023-2024 Orlando Magic regular season roster. Cannot wait to see those guys start hooping for real in just a couple of days here, Luke. Mark Stein. Luke was uh, was tweeting, you know, this weekend about players from the like 2019 or uh, the 2020, I guess, uh, NBA draft class. Chuma Okeke is involved in that because he was drafted in 2019, but the Magic sort of deferred that first year as he was with the then Lakeland Magic as he was rehabbing the ACL. So those guys, Chuma Okeke, 2019 was a 16th pick overall, and then Cole Anthony, 2020, 15th pick overall. Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern is going to be the deadline for those guys to sign rookie contract extensions. If they are not signed to those extensions, the Magic will have the ability to submit the offer sheet to them going into uh, next offseason into free agency. If they sign that offer sheet, it's basically a one-year deal, and then they're unrestricted free agents at the end of next season. 
or they can go into restricted free agency where basically they can just sign a deal with the Magic or they can go and you know visit with other teams. And if they decide they want to sign a deal with one of those teams, the Magic will have the ability to match any contract offer you know, if, if one of these guys signs an offer sheet. We've been talking really like since the end of March, like as we were getting close to the end of last season about Cole Anthony and about the contract extension possibilities and everything like that. We talked to Cole Anthony at media day because no contract extension had been agreed upon or announced or anything like that. And he said, not really focused on that right now. I'm trying to play the best basketball that I can. Chuma Okeke sort of mentioned the same thing, just trying to do the best that he can and let everything else sort of take care of itself. And Jeff Weltman didn't want to really uh, comment on the the contract statuses of, of really any of these guys. But here we are. No deal was done, especially with Cole Anthony throughout the offseason, like we had hoped and expected and, and anticipated. Nothing done just yet. We've got, we're recording this about 8.30 on Sunday night. So we've got like 21 and a half hours now before that deadline. Some of these guys are, are getting signed, like Denny Avdia. I saw he signed a, a contract extension just a couple hours ago. I don't feel optimistic that either of these guys are going to come to terms with the Magic by tomorrow at 6 o'clock or as you're listening to this Monday at 6 o'clock. It's what we've been expecting to this point, right? I mean, you you ask about it at Media Day. Jeff Weltman alludes to the new CBA, and there's a lot of options and you know changes and whatever. And they're kind of it just felt like keeping our options open is what it essentially came across as to me. And something we talked about, you know, on our Media Day episode and the episode after that. So this won't come as a surprise to either of us if there's not any type of agreement reached with either player by deadline tomorrow. What are, where are you with Chuma? I feel like most people are in the same place, but like, let's just talk about that right now. Like, where are you with, with Chuma? Are you like hoping he's able to sign an extension? Like where, where are you at (laughs) with him? So this year he's making the most on his contract to this point, right? He's making 5.2, almost 5.3 million. I don't know what his market is like. I'm going to say, obviously, it's a very low, low floor there. Um, I think the Magic just run the risk on making him a restricted free agent, and if you know, they'll they'll the market will reveal itself. And if it's low enough, the Magic are like we can get you basically for pennies just to fill out our roster. I think they would do that, but because it, you know it's not bad to have him as a 13th, 14th, 15th guy. But at this point, I'd say the Chuma experience has, has come to a screeching halt after accumulating a lot of DMPs last year, coaches' decisions, writings on the wall for Chuma, unfortunately, but just didn't, couldn't really put it together. And maybe he'll be able to do that somewhere else. Maybe he just needs a fresh start. I wouldn't be surprised also if that's what Chuma wants to do. If in the long run, he just wants a new a change of scenery. RJ Hampton saw that, right? He was like, writings on the wall. I'm probably out of here. I'm going to go get some reps not in well Lakeland at the time and then hope for a change of scenery elsewhere. And now RJ had a, a good preseason game, a good showing as bad as it is for the Miami Heat. But regardless, sometimes these guys just want a little bit of change and you can't blame them. I think it's good mutually for them to part ways. I think that's really where I'm at. You know, thinking back to the end of that 2020-2021 season when the Magic decided to blow up like the Vooch, Aaron Gordon, Evan Fournier team. And we saw Chuma, you know, those last 20 some odd games. We were like, wait a minute, is this guy like the second coming of Kawhi Leonard? Because he was like this long, like defensive minded wing who could bring the ball up and like could shoot a little bit, showed playmaking flashes. And that was the the, the peak of the Chuma OKK experience. You know, I think the the next year, I think he was dealing. I don't know if that was, did he have a hip issue or was it the the bone bruise at that time? But I remember that next season sort of had a slow start, Chuma did. And we've just never seen him get back to that level. Has never really moved the same, like since like the injury started like piling up with him. And the shooting is just something that like has fallen off of a cliff. People have talked about like, you know, his shooting form and how like his guide hand oftentimes comes like in front of mm-hmm. the ball which he's never like blocked his own shot, but it sort of looks like he's about to do that. And he's just never been able to stay on the floor long enough 
and really make an impact. Like when he's out there, he just seems to kind of like float around and sometimes it's just sort of like invisible. Like when you're, you're watching games when he's on the floor and just hasn't been able to like crack the rotation, like as much as an opportunity as he's been given in his time here, has just like really never found a way to like consistently have an impact. So I'm, I'm probably where you are. Like, I think for both parties, it's best that, you know, he, he finds a, a, a different, you know, situation. I don't know the magic are going to include him in, in a trade as like salary filler at some point this year, or he's going to go into free agency. I would be really you know, surprised if, if the magic tried to bring him back at all. Like I would, I'd, I'd find it interesting if they even, you know, gave him like the offer sheet, which he yeah. might sign it at this point. Who, who knows if that was, would, you know, be, uh, you know, given to him as an, as an option. But I just think everybody's probably ready to move on. I'm right there with yeah. you. Now, mm-hmm. Cole, on the other hand, the kid the kid has looked great. Uh, looking at his uh, preseason numbers here, so 16 minutes per game, uh, 9.3 points, shooting 56, almost 56% from the floor, 33% from the three-point line, added 3.3 rebounds, four assists. Just three you know, preseason games again in his preseason. But for stretches of some of these games, like we're seeing the Cole Anthony that we saw the last, you know, 40 to 50 games of last year. And if that's what we're sort of factoring into Cole Anthony's future, you really have to start talking about his value, you know, when it comes to the contract extension. Before you know, all this talk about like the collective bargaining agreement and how like teams are really going to be like tightening up their spending moving forward, we're not going to see these crazy astronomical like luxury tax bills and and so on and so forth. I thought it it would be pretty reasonable for Cole Anthony to be somewhere around, you know, $20 million once free agency started and you started to see what some of these other guys were getting. You're like, okay, is it closer to 12? Is it closer to 14? Who really knows? I thought it would be helpful just to go through, you know, some of the extensions that have been signed in, in recent years and just sort of go through like the, the average annual value for some of these guys. So I want to start, um, like Devin Vassell just signed one, you know, uh, about what was that a month or so ago, $27 million per year there. That's a five-year deal. Uh, RJ Barrett's making 26 million a year. Clint Capella, 22, nine, Deandre Hunter, 22, five, Malcolm Brogdon, 22, five, Miles Turner, just over 20 million. Josh Hart, just over 20 million. Uh, Vooch just signed a, a three year, uh, you know, $60 million deal. So $20 million a year there. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, 33 years old. He's making $19 million a year. Uh, Keldon Johnson signed an extension, $18.5 million a year. Uh, Harrison Barnes, 18. Bogdan Bogdanovic, 17 a year. I feel ultimately like that's where Cole Anthony is, is going to end up. Somewhere between 15 and 20 million, I would think and, and hope, because, uh, you know, it's good for Cole Anthony to continue to be on the magic and it's good for the magic to, to save money, to be able to improve this team you know, later on down the road. But like, I want to say 15 to 20 million closer to 15. It, it, it's tough to uh, evaluate a guy like this, who for the most part, what the magic are going to continue to ask for him is to be coming off of the bench. Now in a bigger role somewhere else, is he more valuable? Probably, but you also have to weigh that against, how valuable he is to the magic. Like sometimes you're more valuable to the the team that you're on right now and they might overpay to to keep you here. But I just I think this front office is going to say, prove it to us another year. You take that last 40 games from last year, you get over 82 games, and we'll talk about, you know, getting closer to where you want in, in you know contract terms. Again, this is another disclaimer, Jonathan. This front office knows what they're doing way more than I know what they're doing and also how to do it. They have the foresight. They've got, you know, salary tables. They've got, I'm sure, t- so many spreadsheets and software that these guys are using to put oh, the Excel tables are disgusting, I'm sure. Yeah. So they they have a lot of visuals, right? And really what this comes down to is really with, with Cole, and it, it comes down to everything you said, but I wonder, there's a part of me that's like, did they want to see how Cole looked in preseason? Like training camp's one thing. Maybe they got a better idea because you run the risk. If you let him prove it this year, after preseason, I I don't know that I'm like 100% sold he's going to be the same player that he was last 70% of last year, but I'm willing to 
maybe take that chance and give him an offer. So uh, the reason that I'm I'm hesitant about it is because you have to start putting continuing to put these pieces together heading into the next next season because this is who you've got on the payroll for next season right now without a doubt okay you've got J.I. Dell Paolo Joe Ingles on a team option Mo Wagner Jalen Suggs Anthony Black Franz Jet Caleb Houston you've got gone potentially Markel Gary Harris Cole Anthony Chuma and Goga so taking a look at that you unless you maybe you think J.I. is going to step up and 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 be the guy this year for that bench unit when Cole Anthony either doesn't have it or is out or whatever. I don't know if getting in, you need a bench leader. You need a six man of the year type person candidate, especially building towards the finals appearance. Like that's what the ultimate goal is to win the championship. You need a guy off the bench. And right now the only options really look like to be that guy. If Cole isn't there or Markel maybe is like Jonathan Isaac um, it really that's it. Like unless you're just looking at A B or or Jet to be that kind of filler to be the six man to lead that unit, but I don't think either rookies are going to be ready for that. So there's just a lot to kind of weigh in the balance, and I don't know what that looks like, but I wouldn't mind throwing Cole a little bit more here twenty twenty to twenty two million a year, just to kind of solidify that you're going to have a really a honestly. Aside from maybe Markel, like a core five going into the future years, with Cole Anthony being included in that. To your point about like, are they are you sold that he's the guy that we saw for the last forty games of last year? I don't know that I'm sold that he's that, but what I am sold on, like even seeing him sparingly in preseason, that he's better than the guy that we saw for the first forty games of last year. Like I'm I'm positive that he's at least somewhere in the middle of those guys last 40 Mm -hmm. games of the year was fantastic. I think it was like 15 points, you know, 45 or 46% from the floor and, you know, 37% from the three point line, like was genuinely like really, really good. Yeah. And we've talked about this as well. The magic have now drafted point guards with Cole Anthony being on the roster two separate times, you know, in, in the top six, Mm -hmm. Jalen Suggs, Anthony black. It's just like, Hey, we've got, three guys on this on this roster, you know, that we're comfortable with and Jalen, Cole Anthony, Anthony Black, you just so happen to be the first guy coming up for an extension. We weren't able to come to an agreement this summer. Go out and prove it. If you don't, we're betting that Anthony Black will be able to fill up, you know, fill in in, in some type of capacity. And they'll be I'm, able to figure very... that all of that out this season. Like they're going to get yeah. a good look at Cole. They're going to, mm-hmm. you know, Anthony Black will play minutes. You know, it'll it'll be sparingly. I don't think he's going to be a regular in Very the rotation, but we will see yeah. him. And at the end of the year, they're going to have all the information that they should need on Jalen, on Cole, and on Anthony Black to be able to make the best, most educated decision that they can for that position moving forward. I wonder if maybe the outlook is this team lets Markel walk which God, no. will be <laughs> exactly that not would something be I want so bad. Not something I want to do. Like, but the, unless listen, you're just sold on going into free agency and getting a point guard next year. Well, here's the thing. Here's my thinking. If you don't extend an offer to Cole tomorrow, come this summer, you get him, you give him an offer sheet. He ends up coming to you for the year. And then that next season, you're rolling out with Cole instead of Markel in the starting lineup and Anthony Black getting more minutes. And then that next offseason, when Cole's an unrestricted free agent, you can decide, is Anthony Black any bit ready to be in the starting lineup? If not, Cole Anthony can get re-signed to a decent deal. I, that's what I'm looking at. I don't know if as a possibility. That's not something I'm advocating for. Let me, let me read you a list that is going to make you very unhappy. Okay, Mm -hmm. I just pulled up the free agents, the the point guard free agents for next summer, right? Let's say, let's say, uh, Markel Fultz does walk, right? And this is another point that I want to make is Cole Anthony capable of being like a a point guard on, like a, like a starting point guard on a, on a good team? He, he might be, right? 
Is Markel? I'm very confident in saying yes. And when we're looking at the type of team that the Magic are trying to build, even without the three-point shooting, Markel Fultz fits that archetype better. Like positional, you know, multi-positional defender, you know, size, length, all that kind of stuff, where that's really are the main things that are holding holding Cole back. Like the positional size, the the defensive capabilities, all that kind of stuff, right? So are they going to go from like, oh, we're not going to sign Cole Anthony to a, a contract extension and then one year later saying, hey, we're going to let Markel walk and Cole Anthony is going to be our starting point guard? Absolutely not. If they thought that was a possibility, they would have signed Cole Anthony to the extension this summer. So if you're letting Markel walk, you're you're going to get a you're you're looking to get a starting point guard in free agency or you just believe Anthony Black is going to be that by this time next year. And I haven't seen anything that would make me feel the least bit confident that Anthony Black will be ready to be the starting point guard on a playoff team next year. That's nothing against Anthony Black. He's just a rookie. He's incredibly raw. He needs time. He needs patience. I don't want to just thrust this kid into a situation like that. Before you, let me just go through this list because it's going to get depressing. Kyle Lowry, yuck. Mike Conley, old. Spencer Dinwiddie, no. D'Angelo Russell, meh. Markel Fultz, Tyus Jones, who, by the way, is 28 years old somehow or is going to be 28 years old. That's pretty crazy. Kobe White, Monte Morris, DeLon Wright, Patty Mills, Killian Hayes, Kyra Lewis Jr., Cole Anthony, Russell Westbrook, Patrick Beverly, Corey Joseph, Tyrese Maxey is not going anywhere, folks. Don't get any ideas. Cameron Payne, RJ Hampton, Emmanuel Quickly, Dennis Smith Jr., Frank Nilakina. Uh, Ryan Archie Diacono, Malachi Flynn, Aaron Holiday, Jordan McCl- Do I need to keep going? Yeah, it is slim class. pickings in the in in free agency next year, especially at the point guard position. So if they're thinking like, "Oh, we might let Markel walk," what are we gonna do? Because I don't know that there is a viable option. Like, is Cole Anthony a starting point guard? He might be. But in the way that they've been trying to build this team, I have real questions. And the way that the contract extension didn't come into a fruition makes me feel like there's something to that line of, of thought. Yeah. I, they, they better I be sitting the, the night the finals ends. They're going to be waiting for midnight to call Markel Fultz and be like, let's get this done. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. How does that make you feel listening to that list? Not well, yeah, great. I mean, it, the free agency class as a whole is, you know, is what it is. Um, but that point guard position is terrible. So I, I don't know, man. But it's like, well, what are we doing? Like, if you don't hear anything about Cole Anthony tomorrow, Markel Fultz, like they have until the, the the start of the season. They have until mm-hmm. two. Well, no, I mean, they basically have tomorrow. Because the season yeah. starts Tuesday. So, yeah. yeah. We'll see. It should be interesting. Good but, luck sleeping tonight, folks, thinking about that one. Yeah. All right, let's talk about our patrons a little bit. Um, our patrons are like the coolest people on the planet. Um, True. They financially support the show and help us do everything that we do. Incredibly appreciative of them. Like, If you're one of our patrons and you've ever wondered, like, oh, do these guys really care? Like we absolutely care. Like we love you guys so much. Like thank you for everything. We could not do this without you. If you want to be a part of that and you want to get some of you know Jonathan's love here, mm. not the kind that my wife gets, but you know, a okay. different strictly platonic kind of oh love. You can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the six man show. Where for for as little as two dollars a month you can help support the show. We've got other tiers at you know at, at different you know price points and different benefits. You can check all of that out at our Patreon, patreon.com slash the six man show. Special perk for our Hall of Fame and Elite Tier patrons. We give them a special shout out each and every episode. So I'm going to go ahead and shout out uh, those patrons. Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Carson Tulo, Jonathan Borges, Normal, Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch Dave, Powell and Franz's Warmth, Pierre A., Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Drum, Drum, Drummy, Drum, Drum, Danimal, Dodo 15, Bobby Skinner, PV in the mix, Goaty93, Teddy Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Juan Gerardo, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Destin for Greatness, Caleb Pete, Cannibalism, Time, Mr. TV, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Reek, and Shahan177, 
Bowlby the Don, Himlo, Ben Himro, RM Prof 221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid 714, Spanking Season, Soft Taco, Fuego Nando, Victor Cologne, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Walsh, Fritz, Currency Kev, Bruv Sal, Kaysen Green, Santi Leon, Kane Eckler. A big thank you to all of our patrons. Again, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Let's talk about this uh, final preseason game here, Luke. Friday, the Orlando Magic versus the Brazilian professional club, Flamengo. And this game pretty much went exactly the way we anticipated. The Magic by a mile. Although, Luke, Caleb Houston, Jet Howard, first quarter, like really making me feel things, like in a in a real strong, palpable way. I was texting with our buddy Andrew from Jam Hot Chicken, and we're talking about, oh, like we're going to see Caleb Houston tonight. It's going to be awesome. Like we, we really love this kid. And I'm like, yeah, the kid just needs to start hitting shots. Caleb Houston responded. Caleb Houston, I think it was 13 points in the first quarter, was like four of five from behind the arc, was just wheeling and dealing. Jet Howard, same thing. He went crazy in this game, 21 points, five of 10 from behind the arc. Like Caleb Houston, it's it's no secret to anybody that's listened to the show for any regular amount of time. I love Caleb Houston. I don't know what it is about him. He just seems like a cool kid. I like I like his swagger. I like his demeanor. We've talked about him a ton on the show when he has gotten minutes, like always in the right place. Doesn't wow you, but also doesn't wow you with bad, like doesn't make dumb mistakes, always seems to be in the right spot. And the shooting stroke has always looked pure from day one. But he was always like this like theoretical shooter. Like he looks like a shooter. The stroke looks like he should be a shooter, but the ball isn't going in. And if Caleb Houston can find a way, I mean, I'm not asking for him to shoot four of six from behind the arc every game, but if he can get up into the high 30s or 40% from the three-point line, I don't know if it's going to be here, but Caleb Houston will have a role in the NBA for a really long time. Him knocking down threes got me all kinds of fired up. And then Jet Howard, bro, the wet Dude, jet. He is just a freaking <laughs> knockdown shooter. He is a playmaker, making crazy passes, showing off the dimery a little bit. Like, really impressed with Jet Howard. We saw a little bit of that in preseason from Jet, but the, the kid has a chance to be a real contributor on this team and, and maybe as early as next year. I don't think it's going to be this year, but like as early as next year, like the kid really might be ready to put in some some work. I can see him getting just as hot as we saw those those memories of, of a human torch that we hold close to our hearts. Jed Howard, his footwork is nuts as well. Like he just he he already knows what he is going to do and I, it is on full display. And it was on full display against Flamengo. Some of the moves that he's able to pull to create space and then how quickly he can get a shot off. And it's pretty, like it's not ugly at all. It is it is genuinely a lot of fun to watch a guy like that. And David Steele couldn't stop saying how how pretty his shot was, and especially in this game, going like you said, five of ten from beyond the arc. If I can just have Jet, if I can have him just come in and play like eight to ten minutes on any given night and knock down a three or two, I'll be very content. But he's a guy that honestly, if he can get it going. And if you let him stay in the game long enough, he's going to get into a rhythm and he's going to change the momentum in these games. I really do believe that. So I, man, Jed Howard was so impressive in this one. Not only like, can he make an impact like shooting the ball, but like facilitating a little bit, you know, like he had, he had one, I think it was Caleb that he might've found in the corner for a three early on. And everybody's like, like that, that was like a Paolo esque type of skip pass that he made to the corner. And with Jet, it's not even like the points that he's going to give you, but just like once teams realize like that this kid can really shoot it, like that gravity is what everybody talks about. And if he can evolve and be a guy who, you know, maybe he's the second or third guy in off the bench and can play a little bit, you know, a few minutes with Paolo or Franz, maybe not this year, but again, in like the years to come, that's going to just open up the the floor for guys like Paolo and, and Franz to be able to operate. Like Jet and Caleb hitting threes like in the first half was so much fun. There is a there's a, a small chance, I would say, that we could get some some Caleb and Jet minutes in Osceola this season. And if that's the case, I'm there. 
I'm I'm watching those guys give you know the the Westchester Knicks or whatever their G League affiliate team is giving those guys like a thirty bucket. I'm I'm there to to watch all of that. But really, like this game was just never really close. I think the Magic started this game on like a sixteen and nothing run. Flamengo, you know, they threatened a little bit with like get it, you know, close to twenty. But shout out to No Lyles. Like when we're talking about like world champions of what, like these were our third stringers and exhibit ten guys that were giving you know one of the best Brazilian teams the absolute business. I'm telling you, you give the Denver Nuggets. 82 games to play together, and then they go and play FIBA World Cup or even in the Olympics. Nobody's getting close, folks. It just is what it is. I know it. You know it. Everyone knows it. Franz Wagner, Mo Wagner, absolutely world champs. But whoever hoists the LOB this year, crown them the the, the world champs. Like it, it just is what it is. It's the best league in the world, the best players in the world. And yeah, going back to the box score again, Jet Howard, you know, 21 points. We talked about Travell and Queen, 24 points, 9 of 12, 2 of 4 from behind the arc, and 4 for 4 at the free throw line. Just putting in work, getting buckets. Caleb Houston again, 15 points, added 6 rebounds and assists and 3 steals. Anthony Black filling up the stat sheet, 7 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks was definitely the best that we've seen Anthony Black, especially like facilitating the basketball, you know, getting guys in the right spots and, and finding them for open buckets. Anthony Black especially. Just got to be patient with the kid. He's going to get his opportunities. He, he's he's going to take some some time to, to figure things out. But once he does, he, he's shown some really special flashes, especially as a playmaker and as, as a passer and as and a, a rebounder. So, and, and as a rebounder as well, you know, given five what he was, six, seven. You know, great size for a for a guard. So just be patient with these guys. Luckily, unlike years past, we're not going to be living or dying by the way that the rookies perform. And I know that takes some getting used to, and people are so quick to hit the panic button with the rookies because we've seen things go bad with other rookies in the past. But just do us all a favor. Do yourself a favor. Just be patient with these guys. The, the good news is that they have time to develop on the bench. We don't need them to contribute right away. So look, three and one in the preseason. I think I think I said two and two and two or three and one. I don't remember. You said four and oh. Got mm-hmm. close with you know the the game uh, against the Pelicans, but we could mm-hmm. have won that game, but really just chose to, to rest the starters, you know, in the, the third uh quarter and, and the rest of the second half there. But three and one, you know, Two wins to start it. You have the 122 to 105 win in New Orleans over the Pelicans, the 108 to 105 win in Cleveland over the Cavs. You have the loss at home, 92 to 104 to the Pelicans, and then you have the 109 to 76 win at home over Flamengo to cap off the the preseason here, Luke. And just to give some statistics here, um, in four games in preseason, the Magic finished 17th in offensive rating. They finished fifth in defensive rating. Fifth in overall net rating, uh, seventh in assist percentage, and twelfth in turnover percentage. So, by all means, you know the that advanced analytics here. Magic were good in preseason. Fifth in net rating. Don't want to get too crazy. Again, it's just preseason, but it's much better to like you know be a little bit excited that your team finished top five in net rating than be depressed that they finished like thirtieth. In that rating, I think that would be a bit of a an alarm if that was the case. So we've been there before, mm-hmm. where the Magic don't look good in preseason. We are allowed to yeah. celebrate that they look good in preseason, but now mm-hmm. it's time to do it when it counts. Moving into the regular season, coming up on Wednesday, first game of the year at home. You've got the Houston Rockets in the building. You're wearing the classic jerseys. If there was ever a game in Orlando Magic history that you have to win. Obviously, some finals games would be up there, sure. But now, like this is a must win. This first game of the year, vibes are at an all-time high. You're at home. It's a winnable game. You're wearing the freaking classic edition jerseys. Mm-hmm. You're playing on the classic floor. You absolutely have to win that game, Luke. But what are your overall thoughts from preseason? Just how did the Magic look? Did it meet your expectations, exceed expectations? And then we can take a look at at the regular season one last time before start uh, everything starts to count here. It's funny because collectively 
they definitely met expectation for me. Collectively, they looked like they were able to hang with really any team on any given night. Last year, even, this team was able to hang with teams on any given night. And that was a team that finished the season with, you know, 34 wins, right? So this preseason was super encouraging collectively. Individually, there was nothing to sound the alarm about, but you would have expected Paolo Bancaro to have a better outing in preseason than he had. So that would be the only thing that like was different than what I anticipated. I talked about in uh, maybe like a preseason primer episode where I was like, I expect, you know, I don't expect Paolo to be putting up crazy numbers, but I'm expecting him to, you know, score 15 points a game most of the time. And then most games, he didn't eclipse that. Obviously, these guys are playing first half. They're playing first three quarters. It's all different. All the rotations, you know, can get wonky and they don't stagger and, and whatever. And they're running like very basic things offensively. They're not showing everything. They don't feel like they have to. You know what I mean? So, but yes, collectively, met expectation, probably exceeded expectation just from top to bottom is a very deep roster. And, you know, just on the on the individual level, but it was about guys like Paolo that I'm not worried about at all going into the regular season. I would say that, honestly, they exceeded my expectations a little bit and my expectations were high. But to finish the preseason fifth in overall net rating, so for those of you that don't know, what your offensive rating is is how many points you scored per 100 possessions. Your defensive rating is how many points you gave up per 100 possessions. And your net rating is like the differential you know, from your offensive and defensive rating per 100 possessions. So per 100 possessions, the Magic had one of the, the biggest you know, point differentials in, in the league. So that's exciting. I I really don't know any other way to say that. Like I expected them, you know, defensive, you know, defensively to be there already fifth in defensive rating. Now listen, before you say anything, we've got to see it carry over to the regular season. But just the energy of this team, like something just really feels different. In every game that the Magic really cared about and wanted to win, they won. Even the loss against the Pelicans, I count that as a win because the starters were winning. If we would have played the starters, if we would have played the, the regular rotation, I feel confident that the Magic would have had a real chance to win that game. I don't count any of these preseason games as a, as a real loss here. So that, in that sense, they exceeded my expectations. We're going to talk about our, our predictions here now, I guess. But talking about Paolo, just really quickly, you, you, know, you mentioned that he did look, didn't look himself. I, like not in a bad way, but just like not in really like an assertive way, like just really wasn't like hunting shots. But one thing that has been brought up, injured the thumb during the FIBA World Cup, even talked about that like at the beginning of training camp, like it's still bothering me a little bit. Beginning of training camp was only a couple weeks ago. Is the thumb 100% at this point? I really don't know. It can't be that bad if they're allowing him to be out there and play and everything like that. But I think it is fair to question like whether or not that is still affecting him. Taking what we saw in preseason, what are you most looking forward to seeing opening night on Wednesday against the Rockets? I'm, I'm most looking forward to the rotations. How vastly different are they from the preseason? We talked about it with Phil, um, with Locked On Magic, Orlando Magic Daily here about a week ago, right? Or a few days ago, where we talked about how they're not they're not staggering these lineups. They're playing just basically platoons, right? Like your starters are playing together, your bench is playing together. You're not getting like Franz running with the bench unit at all, those sort of things that I think they're playing close to the vest and just going into because it's really about conditioning and just basic things about the offense schematically that happened during the preseason. And it's all about opportunity. And then going into this regular season, I'm looking at rotation and how is Palo's like usage different in you know and how they use him because in the preseason it was, like I said everything was so vanilla and including how they use Palo which is why I think we didn't get to see the output that we thought we should see from him so that's what I'm looking forward to seeing really is is just the how the offense is running what is different from preseason and how those rotations look I'm like you, really excited and you know, eager to see how the rotations play out. Like, 
Obviously, probably going to see Cole Anthony, first guy in, off the bench. Is that going to be for Markel? Is it going to be for Jalen? I would guess it would be for Markel. But then how are we going to see Paolo and Franz, you know, sort of staggered, you know, with that that second unit? What kind of combinations are we going to see? What kind of minutes restriction is, is Jonathan Isaac on? Like, I, I can't imagine that we would see it play out the same way that we did in the preseason where he plays nine minutes in the first half and then we don't see him at all in the second half. I would guess if it is nine or 10 minutes, we'll see him, you know, five minutes in the, you know, in the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter, and then five minutes at the end of the third quarter, you know, maybe into the fourth quarter. Probably see it play out that way. The other thing you talked about the obvious Paolo. Let, does he just like turn it on once the, the regular season starts? And like, is the offense just going to look completely different? We talked about it with Phil on the last episode. That really like the biggest difference with the offense was just like the way that they're moving the basketball. And it's not this like Paolo Fraun centric offense. It's just like, hey, let's keep moving the ball around. Let's look for the best shot. And whoever gets that, go ahead and get it up. A lot of times it wasn't Paolo in the preseason. Are we going to go back to give the ball to Franz or give the ball to Paolo, put them in a pick and roll with Wendell, and they can just go to work and, and get to the rim? As fun as the offense was in preseason, I definitely want more Franz Varder and, and Paolo Bancaro in the pick and roll and just seeing our young studs be young studs and go and get us 20 to 25 points a night. Like that to me is a lot of fun. As fun as like beautiful basketball is, I don't want everybody to have 12 points in my starting lineup. You know, I, I want to see our, our stars go out and be stars. That's the name of the game. That's what puts butts in the seats, baby. Like that's what I want to see. Aside from that, I want to see some carryover from things that we saw in the preseason into the regular season, primarily Jalen Suggs shooting the basketball. Um, in three preseason games, Jalen Suggs shot 36.4% from behind the arc. I cannot stress how huge that would be, not only for Jalen Suggs, but for this offense and for the Orlando Magic, if he is able to continue to, to carry that over. Uh, another guy, our boy, you know, Joe Ingles, 40% from behind the arc in preseason. We need him to continue to bring that, absolutely. And then Jonathan Isaac, two blocks and almost a steal per game in the preseason. Want to see him to continue to make an impact, continue to work back from the minutes restriction, stay healthy, just all of the above. Like the Magic did some really great things in preseason. None of it matters now. Do it when it counts or it means absolutely nothing. The Magic have to get off to a good start. The schedule is brutal uh, to start the year. You have one game at home, then you're on the road. Then you come back, you've got some tough opponents. And that January stretch, like the month of January, is as brutal of an NBA schedule as I think you will ever see. And if the Magic can get off to a good start this season and gain some momentum and be really confident and competitive going into January, and they can get through January at or above 500, man, this team is going to have a chance to make a really special run February through April and then into the playoffs. If they're able to withstand that and they're good enough to be at or above 500 by the All-Star break, I will not put 50 wins out of the question at that point. That Go, go look at that January stretch. I'm not going to go through the entire thing right now, but it is absolutely brutal. We had a really tough stretch last year in December, like the end of November and into December. To me, this is worse. This is, this is brutal. So it's go time. We've been hyping this team up all off season with good reason. I don't think it's homerism or you know fan bias or blinders on whatever you know you want to refer to it as. I really believe fans have a genuine reason to be excited about this team. It's not coming just from us. It's not just coming from the players. It's coming around the the people that are around this team day in and day out. Everybody that you talk about is so excited for this team, Luke. Let's talk about final predictions. We're going into the season starting Wednesday. The last time that we talked about it, I had the Magic at 43 wins. I believe you had them at 41 wins. Two. Or 42 wins. Mm -hmm. Has that changed for you at all throughout the preseason? And, and, and sort of where are you now? No, I'm staying put. I'm staying put at 42. I'm not going to waver from it. Um, I mean, I believe this team can achieve more than 42. I said it on the sixth fan show. Shout out Ben Gifford. 
heading that up and running point for it uh, for us. But I, I had, I said this. He wanted a hot take, and I said, I think this team healthy can win fifty games this year. And while it is a hot take, it's just a few more games, man. Just a few more games. So I, I that is where a few more games than forty two. Hey, a few more games, baby. Just stay healthy. Let's do it. Well, it's not. Um, well, I just want to. You know, it's not a few more games than we won last year. Like that's sixteen more. Oh, games no, no, no. Than we a few more than year. my prediction for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's a sixteen win jump for sure. That's that's wild. Yeah. But you know, I don't healthy. I, I think that uh, that obviously last year that number is higher. So we'll see. What kind of what kind of jump? So the Kings won forty eight games last year. The year before that, 30. So they made an 18 win jump. Are do we have two like current all stars on this team? Like we have two guys that are going to be borderline. Are we ready to make an 18 win Kings esque jump? I don't quite know. But like a, a 14 to 16 win jump, like to me, that is the ceiling. Like to me, like everything goes the way that we have talked about it. Where Mm-hmm. Mostly healthy, Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner may not be all stars, but, but at least like in heavy consideration for the All Star game, and everything else goes right. This could be a fifty win team. Could I'm be. still at forty three. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sticking to that, but it, I'm I'm telling you, man, we get, we get to the end, of, we get to December first, and the Magic are five hundred or even one game better, and and we're gonna get wild on here. We're we're absolutely gonna get wild. The Oklahoma City Thunder is another team that took a big jump uh, recently, right? They go from twenty four wins in twenty one twenty two to forty. So you saw a sixteen win increase from two years ago to last See, season. I, I think that's possible. It's possible. The week ahead, Luke. Just two games this week. You've got two the home opener. Two and Okay. Two, there we go. Two Two, two and well, a. Well, let me okay, let me Go get ahead. through this. I got let excited, get but yeah, yeah, get, get through it, get through it. At home, Wednesday versus Houston. Tip offs at seven o'clock. If you're in the Orlando area, you you just need to be there. You have to be there. If you're not in the Orlando area, you've got to watch the game on Valley. Then you've got to watch our post game live presented by Rockham after the game, immediately after the game on our YouTube channel. But we talked about this magic one game on the road on at home, and then four games on the road. Uh, the only other game this week is going to be Friday at Portland. That's going to be a 10 o'clock tip off. Like we're just, we're doing the, the late night stuff just straight away this year, folks, but we're, we're going to get it out of the way. So two and O I agree. Magic should start two and O, but because we only have two games this week, I did also want to take a look at the following. We can just talk about that a little bit. So we get a game Wednesday. Awesome. I love that. No game on Thursday. That sucks. Game on Friday. Awesome. And then no freaking weekend game. The first NBA weekend, we have no Orlando Magic basketball. That sucks. That's kind of trash, But you have yeah. a back-to-back Monday and Tuesday. Monday, you're at the Lakers. That game is a 10-30 tip-off. Tuesday, you're at the Clippers. That is a 10-30 tip-off. Then you're off Wednesday. You're in Utah on Thursday. That's a 9 o'clock tip-off, which we're going to be doing a playback for that game, by the way. If you've been asking about the playback broadcasts all off season. Uh, we did them during summer league. We did them during the FIBA World Cup. We're going to be doing them this season. We're gonna we're gonna do our best. I, I want to say this: we are pushing out so much content. Like we are, it's it's almost a little bit daunting because like we're going. I don't want to say zero to a hundred, but we're like more than doubling the amount of content that we put out last year. So we're we we don't want to say oh we're gonna just do tons and tons of playbacks. We're gonna try the playbacks see how they go. If we're able to do them, we will do them. But I will let you all know, like at some point, a man can only do so much. So we're going to try to do uh, you know, playbacks this year. We're going to do the first one Thursday, November 2nd, when the Magic are playing the Utah Jazz at 9 o'clock. Um, so be on the lookout for that. If you don't subscribe to us on Playback, you can find us at Playback TV slash Six Man Show. And then Saturday, November 4th, the second home game of the year, like you know what is that nine ten days into the season uh, at home versus the lakers so in your first six games you, you play the lakers twice and then you're not going to see them for the rest of the year so I don't, i'm not looking for a prediction yet let's get through the the first couple of games and then we'll do the week ahead on next monday show 
But just so that everybody has an idea of, of what is to come, you know, over, over the course of the, the next couple of weeks here, Magic Basketball is back. We're both going to be at the game. Luke is going to be there covering the game. This is going to be my wife and I's 11th straight home opener. Just going as a fan to this game. I'm, it's been a, a while since I've done that at, at a home opener. So I'm just looking forward to that. If you see me, come say what's up. Kiss your baby, shake your hand, whatever you want me to do. I'll look forward to seeing everybody. And it's going to be the first time that I'm, I'm rocking the Paolo Classic Edition. I'm going to be wearing the T-Max as well to this game. It's going to just the vibes are going to be immaculate. I, I genuinely can't wait. I am so freaking excited for Wednesday. It'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. I can't wait. And I can't wait till the Magic win that game. And then I'll get to be obviously doing post game pressers with you know, Moe's and probably two players get to see the joy on their faces after they're, uh, while they're rocking the, you know, classics winning the game by, by 30 plus, it's going to be a great time. If you are a magic fan and you don't, aren't telling yourself the magic blow Houston's doors off. then I don't know if you're a magic fan because this team is just so much fun. And that's a good thing. We didn't look ahead to the next week as well. Because I would have just told you we're going undefeated at this point. You can't tell me anything right now. Until the Magic take a loss, you won't be able to tell me anything. My 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 record, my week by week predictions will become more realistic, maybe, and I'll be able to toss some losses in there once the Magic actually lose a game. But while they're zero and zero, and while they're two and zero at the end of this week, who knows? Maybe next week I'll just be like, hey, we're not losing. I'm not predicting loss till it actually happens. You know. I, I respect that. I appreciate that very mm-hmm. much. Hmm. Looking forward to this season. Uh, if you've been with us throughout the off season, we did it, y'all. Like I really appreciate everybody that that stuck with us and um, new people that found us during the off season. Welcome. Get ready for a, a wild regular season. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we'll we'll be back here. Uh, we're going to record after the game on Wednesday, so we'll both be at the game. We both have close to two hour drives home, and then we're going to record a pod. Kevin is going to do the post game live. He's going to edit the six man show. He's going to edit the six fan show all Wednesday night. So, you know, if, if you're a prayer, throw some prayers up for your boy, Kevin. He's he's going to need those and he's going to need some some caffeine and, and eventually some sleep. But like I, I told the boys today, you had six months to sleep. You know, we haven't played basketball in six months. You should have got your sleep in while you could because we might not be doing much of that, you know, over the course of the next six, seven, maybe even eight months here. Who knows? Let's get crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, let's win some basketball games. Luke, what do you say? That's right. It's game time. It's go time, baby. Let's do it. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. So freaking excited for the season. Hope you guys are too. For Luke Sylvia, this has been Jonathan Osborne. You all have been listening to The Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!